Good evening, how are you? Good to see you again. Thank you, Lynn. Um, good to see you too. And um, hello, viewers at home. Thank you for joining us. And I um, want to talk about anxiety, stress, and fears. Anxiety, stress, and fears. Okay, so, so tell me about anxiety. Very good question because um, it seems to me that in my work, often um, the community perceives anxiety as something. Um, Broken is, is, is something that shouldn't be there. Stress is, is a, a, almost like a bad word, you know, being stressed. And um, I guess it's, um, we decided that it's an important thing to talk about this a little bit today. And um, in explaining anxiety, I would like to attract your attention to the fact that we don't have sharp claws, we don't have big teeth or fur protecting our vital organs. I mean, even our herbivore friends have antlers. Or Horns to protect themselves and um, really thick hide. And th th that video on YouTube that I watched the other day shows a couple of lines on the back of that baby buffalo, and the baby buffalo keep, keeps walking. And an interesting thing is that if I get bitten once by a lion, I'm unlikely to be able to continue walking. Yes. We, I guess, what I'm trying to demonstrate is that humans, we are physiologically quite inferior to a lot of our fairy friends. We don't run as fast. Not, not really at the top of the food chain. No, no, don't jump, fly, swim, climb, fight, you know. Don't do very well physically. However, we've survived through generations, through thousands or millions of years, it's unclear, of course. But um, this wasn't an accident. We had to work very hard for this to happen. and. Um, some of the ways that we respond to threats helped us a great deal. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it's, it's hard to see this today because we've modified this world a great deal, not just where we um, are situated. There's artificial light, artificial surroundings, and there's artificial atmosphere from this air conditioning. Um, we, are control yeah. we have controlled this environment and we're keeping it safe, absolutely. This world wasn't like that. Um, only a hundred or a couple of hundred years ago, it's quite a different world without computers, without very fast cars, and, um, without the beachman covered roads. And um, we had to fend for ourselves. We had to respond to real threats and defend. Um, something very interesting happens to us when, that, or, or, when we need to defend against the threat. Um, <coughs> notice what happens to our heart rate. Absolutely. They, they go up, yeah, right? Certainly does. <laughs> and so does our respiration. We breathe heavily. Our blood pressure rises. What happens here is we instantaneously become sort of a survival machine. Our, our muscles fill up with nutrients. Our joints become instantly lubricated. We're ready to defend. And some or other run away. run away. And we often refer to this as fight flight and we often forget that we freeze mm -hmm. and fright. Um, those responses helped us a great deal to survive on this planet. How? Notice some of the some of the things that happen um, have to do with our digestion. No, that's right, that's mm -hmm. right. To preserve energy mm -hmm. uh, and I guess to direct that energy mm -hmm. The blood goes away from the amount of the muscles that are going to be needed. Please. That's right, going to be needed to survive for that moment, be it run away or be it to uh, address whatever the threat is. Now, you will notice also at high levels of anxiety, we will often vomit, or, or at extremely high levels of anxiety or fear, we actually lose control of our bowels. And that can, in the past, of course, probably not today, today is just embarrassing, but in the past, this was quite helpful. So first, we were light on our feet. <laughs> and second, it, it seems like being smeared in our own vomit and feces helped us avoid a predator because we were no longer palatable or quite tasty. tasty. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Um, probably not a very applicable uh, defense mechanism for today. But notice that whilst we changed the world a great deal, our bodies have not adapted to this environment and, and have not caught up quite as much. And today our threats arrive in envelopes, 
my threats are always um, about some numbers in a machine in a bank which I don't quite understand how they work okay. and yet it seems like I respond with the same with the same mechanism my heart rate goes up my, my, my I, I guess respiration goes up and, and um, one thing that I notice also it's very hard to think during the time when we're quite highly sure. activated. Absolutely. So I'm getting a little bit confused because it sounded like there's anxiety and fear and they were tied together pretty well. Here. That's right. We're in, notice I also use the word activated because this is um, a, a bit of a difficult um, s difficult thing to make a separation between anxiety and fear. And I guess um, one thing that I find useful to look at those and the differences is um, a timeline. On a timeline, I guess the way we respond to threats. Yeah. Um, startle is probably a very immediate response. Yes. Fear is probably something that um, is, is a bit longer on, yeah. on that sort of timeline. Anxiety is probably a bit even longer than that. Okay, so often, I'll continue. Yes. That's right, often about things that are going to come. Yeah. And stress is probably the longest sort of um, um, experience of threat that, that, that we can think of. Right. So, um, in, in, that in, in that respect, um, because there's a, a considerable so, so threat present, mm -hmm. um, be it about money, be it about loss. Keeping a job. That's right, that's right, keeping a job. Um, often in that situation, what's important for me is to remain cool, calm, collected, mm -hmm. to sort of consider an out-of-box creative solution and negotiate effectively with persons affected so that I may address the situation in the best way I can. However, when anxiety happens, that's not quite the case, and my reasoning becomes quite unavailable to me. Yes. Which notice in the past was quite helpful, because reasoning, if you consider what reasoning is about... Sure. If we were saying the tooth tiger checked us, we didn't have time to think about it, did we? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. In terms of time, reasoning takes way too long. That's right. If you think about any decision that you made in your lifetime, you would have considered different options. You would have considered the pros and cons of each separate option. And, and because things aren't of the same importance to us, each pro and con might carry different weight. Mm -hmm. So but these things take time. Absolutely. And in the presence of a saber-toothed tiger, probably not the time we have. No. <laughs> so whilst in the past this helped us a great deal, today this might actually hold us back. Mm. So I guess an important message to take from today is anxiety and fears, uh, uh, stress, those, um, those mechanisms are quite normal. And life-saving in certain situations. Absolutely. Um, in some other situations, we might find that those processes don't help us. And there are different ways that we can um, relate to those events. When I say events, I mean internal events, to that activation, to perform the best way we can in that situation. An important thing to remember here, we don't get to choose whether or not anxiety shows up. No, really um, that's right. It's a bit like the weather. <laughs> it might show up, it might not. And what's important here is what you do with it, or what you do regardless of it. Okay. So, Thanks very much, Nick. Was it more to say? No, thank you. Okay. Thank you for that, Lynn. And um, thank you for the viewers at home for joining us today um, for this talk about anxiety. We will see you next month. Okay, terrific. See you then.